Welcome to another edition of WPBS Weekly Inside the Stories. Tonight, we begin with a piece of regional history about a family of outlaws from the mid 19th century. They are the Loomis Gang. While they operated mostly in Madison County in the mid 1800s, they trickled into Oswego and Jefferson counties with stolen goods and horses that they sold off in Canada. Documentary filmmaker Andy Wolf spent five years putting together his film, Stories of the Loomis Gang. Our Jolene DeRosier has more on this daring gang. And Jolene, this seems like an incredible piece of history. It's an incredible piece of history and one that not many folks are familiar with. But take a look, I'm standing here right now with you on Loomis Road in Oswego County and I'm not too far from the village of Pulaski. And we have learned, thanks to the documentary and history books, that some of the Loomis gang did settle here. Now, they lived primarily in Madison and Oneida counties, and that's where they did business, and that surrounding area. But again, they moved up through Oswego, further into Jefferson, and then into Canada. And as documentary filmmaker Andy Wolf tells us, they kept themselves awful busy. North Brookfield? Yes. I think, Constable. You guys from Waterville. Andrew Wolf has been brainstorming the making of the Loomis Gang documentary since he was a young boy. I was probably like eight years old, driving down Route 12, heading to my cousins in Binghamton with my father and mother. And my dad just pointed over and said, oh, that's where the Loomis homestead used to be. And he started telling some, some of the stories. And one of the stories he told, I remember, is like them hanging Plum Loomis. And in an eight-year-old mind, I'm like, that. They hung a guy right here. That's wow. That's incredible. That's what a story. So that kind of like kept kept me going since eight years old. I've been thinking about this. I'm now 57, 56. Um. <laughs> the story never left him. The filmmaker spent the next several years writing and filming horror movies and working on other independent projects. He's also the chief photographer at a news station in Syracuse. And all the while, the notorious gang never left his mind. Truth be told. The documentary, called Stories of the Loomis Gang, was a project 20 plus years in the making. It took, yeah, five to six years because I just came up with the idea and always wanted to do it. Been wanting to do it since I was like first started on TV. So it took like, actually, if you look at it, it took like 26 years <laughs> because I had the idea a good 20 years ago. And then uh, I finally decided to do it. I got, I got done one project. And I was like, you know, I want to start this next. I want to get this done. So I just started with one interview. I drove down to Washington and talked to Dr. Tory. And that was it. Yeah, I just started with that one interview. And then from there, I was like, okay, now where I go from here. His television news and filmmaking experience led him first to books and photos. But there were very few photos of the gang. So he decided to go with reenactments. Actors showed up and worked hard, ready to shoot, fight, and tussle whenever necessary. For those not familiar with the Loomis Gang, they dominated Madison and Oneida counties in the 1850s and 1860s, scaring locals, paying off officials, and taking whatever they pleased, whenever they pleased. After reading the books, and then at first it seemed like it was pretty much petty stuff going on, but then as I learned more, it was like, there's some serious stuff going on as far as, I mean, shootouts and hangings, you know, arsons, burning people's barns, taking, you know, that basically stealing the livelihood and burning down their, 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 their livelihood. So that was kind of like the surprise how, how intense this fight was. And they spread across all the New York State to Vermont, down to Pennsylvania, and surely up into Canada. So they definitely went through water towns to, you know, get up to Canada. Uh, yeah, this is a, a huge network of 200 gang members and it was kind of like the first, you know, East Coast mafia almost, if you will. This East Coast mafia lifted furs, swiped jewels, and stole hundreds of horses over the years. When the Civil War broke out, they took horses from the Union and then sold them back to the Union. Some of the animals ended up in Canada, and one of the Loomis brothers had to hide out there to avoid prosecution. But the story of the gang goes deeper than their thefts, and it's where things really get interesting. One constable back in the day wanted nothing more than to take them down. His name was Jim Filkins, and he nearly lost his life more than once to take the family down. 
why was what was the motivation to take these guys on? They bought off everybody else. They just had free reign because they bought off the judges, the sheriffs, the constables. They just, but for some reason, this one constable, Jim Philkins, just was like, uh, no, this this isn't right. And he just kept going after them. Philkins went after the Loomis gang hard, and you're probably wondering what the outcome was. But to know how this story ends, you'll have to find out by watching the documentary. It's such a great piece of history, and I still say to people, I'm doing a documentary on the Loomis gang, they're like, oh, well, what's that about? And I'm like, oh, you don't know the Loomis gang? They're like, uh, no, and then I start telling them, and you can see, like, also, wow, that's, that's incredible, I've never heard of that, and that sounds like a, a great story. It's a great piece of local history, and, uh, I like local history. It's just a just the Wild West on the East Coast. For more information on the film, visit the Loomis Gang documentary Stories of the Loomis Gang on Facebook. For WPBS Weekly Inside the Stories, I'm Jolene DeRosier.